Is it just cleaning the blood or is it getting rid of um, family items as well? So the family's not involved? Okay. It's messy. How many rooms did it go over? Okay. But there's a lot of brain and bone matter. Okay, so what with a shotgun? Okay, and what's the relation to the person to you? All Gone Extreme Clean came about because a friend of mine committed suicide and his mother was told to clean it up and obviously we couldn't let her do that. So I continued my studies in forensic medicine and now that's where we are. We clean up crime scenes, squats, squalors, everything that you can think of, natural deaths, but we also do domestic and commercial cleaning as well, but we basically are crime scene cleaners. A lot of people assume that um, the cleaning is done by the police or done by the, by the ambulance or, or is done by somebody else. Um, very rarely people realise that that sort of cleaning falls back to the family. 30 years ago this job would not have existed. Mm -hmm. Families cared about each other, families looked after each other, there was no throwing family, you know, family members into hospital and leaving them alone. Mm -hmm. Now it is. But, fortunately or unfortunately, that's what I do and that's what they pay me to do and I come in and try and make it easier. I don't know if I do. Some people just thank me and want to hug me and do everything and other people treat you like you're the black plague, that you've got two heads because you do this sort of work. Well, I'm very normal, I have a good husband, I have my bird, I have a good life, I have lots of family. So I haven't got two heads. I'm, you know, and I do go home sometimes and have a cry about it. Hi, Pete. Hello. Coffee? Yes, please. If she needs to talk to someone uh, and release, um, you know, whether it's stress related, whether it's frustration, if she needs to release um, I'm there for her, um, so I, I do support her. And if she needs to talk to someone, um, you know, she she can rely on me. I've got a really close friend who his brother-in-law committed suicide um, in his car. Um, the daughter and his ex-partner um, found them. Then six months later, Sharon hung herself and the daughter found her as well. So she's lost two parents in six months. That little girl is 13 years old, lost two parents and Sharon thought that she had done the right thing by leaving a book on how to date boys, how to do this, how to do that, um, you know, how to have your periods, how to go on the pill. And she'd written a whole book for her daughter, a suicide man. She left her 13 year old daughter and she hung herself and let her daughter find that. And then the police found this book and, told, and it told the daughter everything, how to go and get your first credit card, how to do this. This girl had been thinking about this and this girl rang me a week before she died and begged me to speak to her and I didn't. So that was one that I did not clean up, but that was one that played on me so badly because I had ignored her and I had wished her dead because of the way she was treating her daughter. A lady gave birth in a car and the baby didn't wait. Like, there was no waiting. This baby was popping out. So there was blood everywhere. I, I enjoyed that. I didn't charge them. I couldn't charge them for it. I got to do something coming into the world that was alive. Instead of cleaning up, 
death. This is a massive big part of his lung. And that's part of his lung as well that he has coughed up. This is an agonising death. Mm. And he should religion. have been in hospital or he should have had someone with him. Someone would have heard him. Don't tell me. If I have a coughing fit, my, you know, people know. He's died and he's coughed like that and brought that blood up. Sexy Bubba Joe. Sexy Bubba Joe, come on. Everyone has to take five minutes out of what they think is so important in their life, kick himself up the arse and go, let's just care about each other more. People don't. People forget that. And I think if someone came out and did some time in a kid's hospital, they'd forget that their little aches and pains are important. They'd forget that, oh shit, I've got to get a bigger house than everybody else. They'd forget, you know, I need the best jewellery. It would be forgotten. Come out to a crime scene. See the devastation, not only of the person who lived in absolute squalor or lived in a mansion and just got himself in so much shit that he had to blow his brains out and just realise life is just so important. I think if I've made it easier for a family, it doesn't matter what I've seen. I've stopped them seeing it and that's all that matters. It's not my family's blood, it's their family's blood. They don't need to see it. I've stopped that. They've walked away, they don't need to see it. And they come back and it's clean and they don't have to know. And that makes me feel better.